Hi, I'm Teresa Sigman, founder of Seam Sensational and creator of the Sew Like a Pro Training School. Welcome to this free three-part video series designed especially for women who compete or perform in ballroom and country western dancing or ice and roller skating and who know how to sew, even if you've never made a dance or skate dress before. Thank you for taking time to watch. I'm excited you're here. Now we all know dancing and skating can be expensive with lessons, travel, competitions, and costumes. To help save money, many folks, such as yourself, buy used dresses and alter them, or perhaps you make your own costume from scratch using a photo as an inspiration. Maybe you're already an experienced sewer who makes costumes for others. Whatever your reason for warming up the sewing machine, you'll gain valuable insights in this training series to help you choose, alter, or make a dress that suits your body shape and size. During these videos, I'll introduce two main topics you need to know to get started crafting or recreating the dress of your dreams. This training focuses on how to design or choose a neckline that best suits your body. Stay tuned for the top 10 tips for neckline success. In the second training video, you'll get a sneak peek into one of the Sew Like a Pro series while I personally fit a client. In other words, I'm giving you two key ingredients for dress success, strong design principles and how to do a proper fitting. If you know how to sew, you've probably thought about making your own dance or skate costumes, even if you haven't attempted it yet. Now there are many reasons why I think you should begin making your own costumes, but hands down, the three main reasons are save money, make money, and have flexibility in costuming. Now for many of you, the number one reason to make your own costumes is to help offset the costs of lessons and competitions. A high-end, off-the-rack Latin dress, ball gown, or skate dress in the United States can easily run between $4,500 and $7,000. That's not even a custom-made dress. When you make your own dress for a fraction of that cost, you can turn around your savings and put it right back into more lessons or an extra competition. Number two. Dressmaking as a source of extra income appeals to many of you watching this video series. Are you having success with your own costumes and feel really ready to dabble in making dresses for ladies at your studio? Or maybe you're an up and coming designer who wants to know insider tips to decrease your frustration level while increasing efficiency and client satisfaction? Whatever your reason, there are lots of things you can do with a little extra money each month. You can take more lessons, pay for your child's or maybe even your own college education, or have fun and put more rhinestones on your dress. Just think of the possibilities you can have making money doing something you enjoy in a field you're passionate about. And number three, my personal favorite benefit of making your own costumes is flexibility in costuming. I remember the days when I was competing and I needed a lot of costumes every year. So do you need a quickie costume for an impromptu show? Do you have a basic competition dress but want an extra special one to wear for scholarships or large events? No matter why you need a dress, the answer is no problem. When you make your own costumes, you don't need to spend weeks or months scouring hundreds of websites looking for a dress you like. And you don't need to wait six to 12 weeks to have a custom dress made only to find you're not quite wild about it or it doesn't fit well. Once you learn the skills Sew Like a Pro teaches, you can make not just the one dress shown in the photo, but you can make countless dresses using all the same construction principles. The only extra thing you'll need is more time to do it. Now, while I cannot give you a magic clock with more sewing hours each day, I can teach you everything else you need to know to create that dazzling dress. I am passionate about what I do, and I can go on and on about all the reasons you can and should make your own costumes, but we've got a lot to cover in this video, so let's keep moving. 
Just for the record, this training series is not about selling you an expensive, off-the-rack, or custom dress from me or another designer. It is about teaching you how to effectively alter an existing dress or create your own dress from scratch so you have pride in your work as well as have more funds available to put back into lessons or competitions. What I share with you here is what's at the core of my company, Seam Sensational's philosophy, helping you, the ballroom and country western dancers, the ice and roller skaters, feel beautiful and confident in your costumes so you perform better. Taken one step further, my Sew Like a Pro training school teaches you to make your own exquisitely perfectly fitting dress without having to spend a small fortune on high-end or custom-made dresses. My goal is to help you learn to emphasize your natural beauty and minimize the things that you consider flaws so that you always perform looking and feeling your best. I have quite a few clients who have me make their serious competition gowns, but they create the dresses for showcases or other small scale performances. Why? They like to save money as well as they enjoy the challenge and pride of making their own costumes. However, a common concern I hear from those clients is, and you may have the same struggles, I don't know where to start. <laughs> I don't know what to design or what will look good on me, or worse, when the dress is finished, they call me and say, ugh, the skirt doesn't flow well, it doesn't look as good as I wanted it to, it looks homemade, I hate it, Teresa, please, can you help me? I put so much time into it, I don't want to throw it away. Sound familiar? Don't worry though, you do not need to be a professional seamstress or a fashion school graduate. You don't even need to watch multiple seasons of fashion runway or what not to wear. You don't need to struggle as much as you currently are. When I made my first Latin dress in 1988, I had only been doing ballroom about six months and I had nothing but a small sewing machine in my bedroom. Worse, there was no internet <laughs> to research sewing tips or fashion trends. Trust me, <laughs> when I say my first two dresses were dreadful. But if I can do it back then with no help, you can do it now. I'll show you how. I want you to get as much out of this training as possible. I included a downloadable PDF that covers each neckline we'll talk about in the top 10 tips for neckline success. If you haven't already done so, stop the video for a few minutes to download and print off the file that accompanies this training. Don't forget to save it on your computer somewhere so you can access it at any time you want for future projects or when you go shopping. Also, I included a fantastic homework assignment. I love this assignment. It will help you discover which necklines look best on you with your face, with your shoulders, with your chest, with your rib cage. Now, I don't have time to go into the details of that assignment right now, so be sure to download the PDF below and then come right back. We've got a lot of exciting topics to talk about. There are three last things I wanna cover before we get started. One, modesty and harsh words need to float right out of the window. Good progress can't be made if you always say, oh, I hate my belly, I hate my thighs, nothing looks good on me. It's best to focus on how you can accentuate the positive, thereby minimizing the aspects you don't like. The top 10 tips does exactly this. I'll show you how in a moment. Number two, when I talk about body fat or body shape, I'm making neutral comments about what is. I address issues I felt or have heard my clients say. I'm not saying one shape is better than other. I'm not saying curves are better than straight. I believe we should all feel comfortable with how we look, and if we aren't, change as much as you can and accept the rest, but that's a different video. So, while there are no good and bad body parts, there are good and bad dresses that we can put on our body parts. And lastly, the top 10 tips for neckline success works just as well for street clothes as it does for dance and skate costumes. So come on, let's get started with the top 10 tips for neckline success. No racerbacks, just avoid it. 
<laughs> I've only seen it once, maybe twice on the dance floor over the decades. And it made such an, a scary impact on me that I'm like, no, it was the first thing that I had to tell you. Why not do a racer back? No matter how feminine you make it, two things are going to happen. Um, one, you're going to have chicken wings, as I had a client say. I had a lady in San Francisco who says, I don't have shoulder blades, I have chicken wings. Let's cover these things up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Sandy, we can do this. <laughs> and so anyway, racer backs are just really not good on any body type. Not one that I've seen anyway, because it does. Shoulder blades are not the sexiest part of your body, whereas the spine and all the muscles that run along the spine are way more appealing and way sexier than your shoulder blades. So with a racer back, you're just exposing, you know, the equivalent of your elbows or your knees and covering up all the really beautiful stuff. The other stuff, body parts, the other negative thing about doing a racer back is that it can make you look really meaty. It can make you look, your lats and your scapulas just look really fleshy and really meaty. So yet another reason why you want to avoid doing a racer back. No back bra strap. If you want to build a bra, you know, if you're making your own dress or you buy one off the rack and it doesn't have good bust support, and you want to sew in a bra so you've got good cleavage, you know, or, or high lift or whatever, great, don't show the back. <laughs> Just don't because you're gonna ruin a perfectly good dress because it's detracting. Best case scenario, you cover the, the back of the bra in something that matches your skin really, really well or you put foundation on it. Even then, you still just don't really wanna go there because there are a lot more alternatives. So if I say no to showing the back of your bra strap, then I would say yes to using decorative crisscross straps. There are a lot of options that you can do with these decorative crisscross straps that can replace that ugly horizontal line that for unless you are just super lean is going to create the gush back here that most of us don't want to show. If you're large or low busted, you want to avoid crew necks, boat necks, or turtlenecks. Reason being is that if you'll notice the difference in me wearing this top versus the top I had on earlier, I'm wearing the same bra, <laughs> but my breasts look much wider and rounder. Reason is, is because you've got a lot of distance from here to here, which so if you're already low busted, it makes them look even lower because there's such a big distance from the tip of your bust to your shoulder. And also when you have this much fabric covering, it tends to make you look really wide out here. This particular neckline is really quite similar to the red one that I just had on and that the idea of it is high and it's very modest and I still have full coverage here, but this little shape opening in the front really breaks up that distance between the shoulder and the tip of the bust, thereby lightening up the chest load for those of you who are bustier than me. <laughs> Speaking of being bustier than me, if you are small busted, very petite, such as I am, you can wear pretty much any neckline and carry it off well. You, if you want to use padding, great. Make it look natural. So if you are not, you know, if, if your natural shape is maybe an A or a B cup, you don't want to pad your dress so that you suddenly become a C or a D cup. <laughs> It's going to feel awkward for you. And even though it won't be heavy because it's foam, it could still interfere with your balance if you're not used to suddenly sticking out another inch or an inch and a half. One of the reasons that you may or may want to increase your bust size is to offset hip curves. So if you do have very curvy hips, having a slightly larger bust, not jumping up two sizes, but having a slightly larger bust will help create more of an hourglass shape, thereby not necessarily minimizing the look of the hips, just balancing it out with what goes up on top. Are you one of the many people who have asymmetrical shoulders? So there may be one shoulder is higher than the other. One way to remedy and camouflage asymmetrical shoulders or other asymmetrical body parts, whether because of a muscular imbalance or you know, meaning that you just have muscles overdeveloped on one side and underdeveloped on the other, 
So whether it's muscular imbalance or something like scoliosis, one way to camouflage an asymmetrical body is with an asymmetrical neckline because it will instantly draw your eye to the line of the dress, thereby drawing the eye away from your actual body shape. And what if you don't like something this severe? No problem. Then wear a less severe, more gentle shape, such as this top. Either a steep asymmetrical or a real subtle asymmetrical will do a great job camouflaging your asymmetrical body parts. I round up to 5'1", which is about 155 centimeters. So I am definitely on the short side. If you fall into the same tiny, you know, the tiny side, and you want to look a little taller, anything that runs from your up around your neck Plunging in the front is a really great way to create vertical height. Now, if you don't necessarily want to be all covered up like I am in this particular top, then you can create that same illusion with decorative straps that go up over the shoulder, um, any kind of halter, anything that basically gives you a long line from here to here, but leaves you open in the middle. Let's talk about sleeves. Number one rule, when in doubt, wear them <laughs> don't even give it a second thought if you feel the least bit self-conscious about having your triceps flap around because it's a hanging muscle they tend to flap no matter how lean you are so if you feel self-conscious even the least bit about having bare arms cover them up because if you are self-conscious about that your confidence level will not be as high as it, it could be and you won't be able to concentrate on performing as well as you should now, I love this particular picture. You can see the difference from right to left on what, I mean, literally, what a difference this mesh sleeve makes. She always likes sleeves and she always likes mesh sleeves. She calls them pantyhose for the arms. So, when in doubt, wear the pantyhose on the arms. Another great rule for wearing sleeves is don't have, them, don't have the length end at your wrist. Now, I tend to have very masculine looking hands anyway, just because I'm so lean. I tend to have a lot of veins showing and I have very powerful hands because I use them all the time as most seamstresses do. So, as you are making your sleeve, don't have it end right at the wrist. It'll give you a man hand. It makes, them, it makes your hands look really strong and makes them look very wide in comparison to a tiny wrist. So, if you are doing a long sleeve, either End it as a three-quarter sleeve, perhaps even add a little ruffle if you want a very feminine look, or better yet, if you want a full long sleeve, have it come at least one and a half inches, so about four centimeters beyond your wrist bone. And that makes your hand, especially a masculine looking hand, look more feminine. One of the must do's for sleeves is to use stretch fabric for sure. I mean, when we're dancing, we kind of like to raise our arms and bend and move and twist. And if you have a non streps fabric, it's going to feel like it falls off your shoulders. It's going to feel too tight in the bicep or the tricep area. So there are really a lot of beautiful stretch fabrics out there. So even if you bought a used dress or you currently have one that you're trying to add sleeves to, the sleeves don't have to be the exact same fabric. You could use a mesh or any other type of accent fabric as long as it stretches. I hope you enjoyed learning about how necklines impact your look and therefore how you feel. None of us were born dancing or skating, certainly not making costumes, but with some knowledge to amp your confidence and skill level, such as my top 10 tips for neckline success, making a dress that looks and feels great on your body is absolutely in your realm of possibility. Remember, there are many reasons for you to start making your costumes today. Imagine how many thousands of dollars you can save on a custom or high-end off-the-rack dress why not put that towards more lessons or an extra competition each year? If you're a bargain shopper, have you truly calculated how many hours you spend looking for that perfect dress? Why not put that time into creating one from scratch? 
Have you made a few dresses and find the process too frustrating with the finished dress not worth the effort? You can do it and you can do it right when you learn to sew like a pro. Feel the pride when you wear a dress you made from scratch. I'm not talking the kind of dress in which you walk out on the floor and you look around and you suddenly feel like you're wearing last decade's fashion. And I'm not talking about a dress that constantly malfunctions so you have to push and pull and shove it back into place in between each routine. I mean the kind of pride and confidence that pulses through your body when you wear a superbly fitting, high quality dress that looks and feels amazing. And guess what? You made it. Lastly, never be stuck with just one dress again. When you make your own costumes and whip out several a year for competitions or show routines, you may well need more closet space. All jokes aside though, I'm really excited you have my top 10 tips for neckline success. Remember, these suggestions work great not just for skate or dance, but also in real life. Now, whether I teach people to make their own costumes or I make the originals for them, I always want to hear what you have to say because it helps me continue to learn and grow and it helps me produce products that you want to watch. So please leave me a comment below. Tell me what your favorite tip from this video is. Which necklines had you not considered before that you'll be able to implement in your next dress or when you purchase a blouse at the store? And if you like the top 10 tips for neckline success as much as I do, I'd love it if you shared it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. So don't forget to join me for the next video where you'll step into one of the Sew Like a Pro training programs to watch part of a personal fitting. Check your email in a couple of days for video two. And don't forget to leave a comment below telling me about your aha moments from this video or your costume meltdowns. And be sure to do your own neckline success homework and post the photos on the Seam Sensational Facebook page. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.